With me today is Dr. Donya Keene, an assistant professor in our Department of Social and Behavioral Sciences in the Yale School of Public Health. Her expertise is how social policies contribute to health inequalities, particularly focused on housing and neighborhood environments. These issues are of immense importance uh, as we tackle health disparities in the United States today. So welcome, Danya. Thank you for inviting me. So describe for us the current landscape of affordable housing, uh, both here in New Haven and broadly in the United States. Sure. So low-income renters are currently facing a severe affordable housing crisis. Wages have not kept up with rising housing costs, and federal aid has not kept up with increasing need. Um, as one example of this crisis, there's currently no state in the country where a full-time minimum wage job is sufficient to affordably rent a one-bedroom apartment. And in many areas of the country, including here in New Haven, nearly two full-time jobs are needed. Um, and as a result of this shortage of housing, families are spending huge portions of their income on rent. So 50% of American renters, of all American renters, spend more than 30% mm. of their income on housing costs. Mm. And among the poorest renters, three quarters spend more than half of their income on rent. Mm. And these untenable rent burdens have contributed to rising rates of eviction, instability, and homelessness. So the poorer the uh, individual, the greater the proportion of that limited income is spent on housing. So uh, given uh, this lack of uh, housing stability, what are the impacts on personal health? Yeah, so there's many ways that a shortage of afford this affordable housing crisis can affect health. Um, one example is that when there are housing options are constrained, families are forced to choose units that have health hazards such as lead paint or mold. Um, but beyond these health hazards, having to spend so much of your income on rent or not having any place to call home can contribute to stress that is profoundly health demoting. Um, and one thing that we're looking at in our work is the way that housing access can shape the management of chronic health conditions. So we've interviewed low-income adults who have type 2 diabetes, and they've described to us how hard it is for them to prioritize the many complex behavioral demands of ma managing their diabetes when they're worried about where they're going to sleep at night or how they're going to pay their rent. They've also talked to us about how hard it is to maintain a consistent health routine when they're moving from place to place. And, and finally, our participants have described how when they finally obtain stable housing, their diabetes improves dramatically. And sometimes uh, poor housing can directly uh, exacerbate illness. Asthma comes to mind. Yeah, yeah, for sure. When thinking about conditions such as mm -hmm. um, mold. Um, mm -hmm. is, are we making progress in alleviating these low-income housing shortages, or are things getting worse? Um, so, you know, we haven't made much significant progress, but, but one thing that we're doing, looking at in our work is the potential for an expansion of federal rental assistance programs to, um, to improve health and reduce disparities. Um, so the, um, HUD, the U.S. Department of Urban Development, currently provides assistance in the form of vouchers and subsidized project-based housing to five million households, and that number has, has remained stable um, across recent decades. Um, and this number also represents only a quarter of the individuals who are eligible to receive this aid. Mm -hmm. there, there just simply isn't enough assistance to go around, and waiting mm -hmm. lists um, are measured in years or mm -hmm. even decades. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, um, recent research shows that individuals who receive assistance have better physical, mm -hmm. mental, and behavioral health relative to those who are on waiting lists. Um, mm -hmm. So it's possible that this um, savings in public health care dollars could offset some of the costs of expanding uh, these programs. Excellent. Well, we're very proud of the work you're doing. Uh, we think you're tackling a vital nexus uh, between disciplines, the issue of housing and the issue of public health and, and health outcomes. So keep up the great work, and uh, uh, we look forward to following your progress. Thank you. Thank you for having me.